not with a hex beam antenna, into a hex beam antenna with an ICOM 7300, over. Hi and welcome back to another video and welcome back to another new product to be featured on the channel. Now this is the FX4CR, designed and built by Chinese radio operator BG2FX. Now it's the latest version of the FX4 range, which now has 6 meters support and built-in Bluetooth. It covers from 160 meters right up to 6 meters, with an RF output range from around 1 milliwatt up to 20 watts across the bands. Now there are a few small bespoke radios on the market today, and quite frankly, most of them are quite shit. However, this little beauty, in my opinion, has to be one of the best. Now let's just take a look at what you get delivered. So as you can see, the whole kit comes in a nice protective case, along with a user's manual, which is in English, and it's rather well written. We also get a couple of spare fuses, and a power cable which appears to use the XT60 connector. And when I first saw the microphone, it made me think that it wouldn't be any good because it kind of looks a bit cheap and plasticky, but it does actually do a good job and it keeps the whole setup to a minimum due to its size. We then get a unique USB cable, which on one end has a 3.5 millimeter plug, which goes into the radio side. Now more about that later on what it can do. Then of course we have the radio itself. Now the FX4CR is made entirely of machined metal, giving that built to last feel. Of course, we have the backlit rubber function buttons and plastic rotary controls alongside that color two inch TFT display. Now down the left side, we find the main antenna connection, which is in the form of a BNC socket. We also find a headphone socket, an extension speaker socket, and the microphone input. On the right side, we find that unique USB socket, which is kind of colored yellow, a CW key socket and a PTT out to control things like external amplifiers. Now the FX4CR does not have an internal battery, so we find the power connector on the right side too. Uh, Echo 7, three Mike. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec Whiskey. Uh, Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec Whiskey, you're five and nine in Bosnia, name is Danny, over. Yeah, thanks very much, Danny. You're also five and nine, 73. Holding in the menu button opens the settings menu. And from here, you can change items like IF frequency, AGC speed, enable or disable Bluetooth, adjust the TX filter bandwidth, and also the transmit speech compression amount. Now to exit the menu and save settings, just press and hold that menu button again. Adjusting mic gain is as simple as pressing the AF encoder and then turning the dial to a level that suits your needs. RF output power level is adjusted by pressing the PWR button once and then using the AF encoder to adjust the power level as shown here. Now to change bands, tap the F button and then press one of the large buttons. You notice that each button has band text in frequency on the bottom right. The tune dial adjusts the frequency shown on the display and if you hold in the tune dial while turning, the tuning steps can be changed. You can see the little arrow above the frequency digits and when you release and then turn the tune dial, the digit with the little arrow above will now start to change. Now pressing and holding in the SSB button will enable or disable the inbuilt DSP or digital noise reduction. Pressing in the MV button will enable or disable the inbuilt noise blanker feature. You can see if the NR or NB are turned on or off by the on-screen indicator on the left. Now the receive filter can be altered by pressing the filter button. The filter bandwidth indicator on the top right of the display shows the current value that's set. It just cycles few, a few different preset values. The IF ATT button switches in or out the two attenuator levels. So that's perfect for when you're receiving extremely strong stations. Now if I've missed any of the features or functions, then please consult the user's manual. It's available to download on the bg2fx.com website, which I will obviously link below. And with the FX4CR connected to my infrared half-wave antenna, let's take a quick listen around the bands. And then they fall over. You need to measure the volts coming out of it uh, when it's on load. I'll be able to do it right. 30. 20. 20. 20. 
This is M0 DQW testing on the FX4 Charlie radio. The FX4 Charlie radio just transmitting into a dummy load, transmitting into a dummy load so we can test the audio and record the audio quality. Currently set a TX bandwidth of 3 kilohertz. Uh, mic gain is around 40 and compression is set to around 40. It seems that we may have to do some adjustments to make it sound better. This is what the audio quality sounds like. Testing, testing, M0, DQW, over. As mentioned earlier, the FX4CR has an inbuilt sound card and virtual COM port when used with a supplied USB cable connected to your computer. Now always plug the cable into the radio before plugging into your computer and turning the radio on. Now once powered on, you'll find two audio devices within Device Manager. One's for microphone and the other is for speaker. Now both are labelled as USB PMP sound devices. Under COM ports, you'll also find a new device. Now for me, it's COM19. Now when it comes to configuring digital mode software like WSJTX, for example, and just set the serial port to match the one shown in Device Manager and use a board rate of 115200. Now I set the PTT method to CAT, which appeared to work quite well for me. The rig type, however, that I chose is Kenwood TS590S. And that's because the FX4CR uses the Kenwood protocol. Now the same settings apply when using other software packages like MMSSTV. Incidentally, if you press the SSB button on the radio, you can cycle through to the Digi mode, which will widen the bandwidth to 3 kHz as standard. Now, when in Digi mode, the radio will have no audio coming from its internal speaker. If you want to be able to hear what you're receiving on the radio as well, then just change back to normal USB mode without Digi mode on, and then make sure that your bandwidth is set to 3 kHz. Sorry about that. That's the ear bleeding sound of FT8. Now, if FTA or any other digital mode is your thing and you'd like to operate portable, then using the FT4CR inbuilt Bluetooth feature, you can cat control and even send and receive audio from an Android device. Now, the application running here on my Android tablet is called FT8CN, and it's a free app available on the internet or specifically GitHub. I'll leave a link to that down below. Now, if you find that Bluetooth is unreliable for whatever reason, then you can use a USB cable between the FX4CR and your Android device. In fact, this works just as well, if not better, as it's a direct wired connection and you're not relying on radio waves for the connection of serial data and two-way audio. Now, I have a couple of new antennas that I need to test portable, and I think this radio will make a great candidate to take portable. Now I'm just waiting for some batteries to arrive so I can power the radio and then I'll make another video on the FX4CR using it portable. So if you have any questions, get them in quick below and I'll try and answer them in the next FX4CR video. Now, as always, a massive thank you to the YouTube members and Patreon supporters as well as all of you subscribers and those of you that watch my videos. Now, if you're interested in getting one of these FX4CR radios yourself, then I'll leave a link down in the description below of where you can trust to buy one. Now, as we head close to 100,000 subscribers, I'm gathering a goodie bag of radio-related items to give away once I reach that target. So make sure to be subscribed for that. And don't forget, it's free to do, and you'll be notified when I next upload a video. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.